Foundation stands for policy-oriented research and research-based policy recommendations to the government. It is in this context that we invite the best minds from the country and abroad to come and speak to us on various issues. Today's webinar is on Digital India and will be chaired by Dr. Arvind Virmani, who is our chairman of the Think Tank Ebro, as well as the former Chief Economic Advisor, Government of India, as well as the former Executive Director at IML. He is well known in policy circles. In policy circles, he has contributed immensely in the past. With this, I hand over the session to Dr. Arvind Virmani. Thank you, uh, Dr. Charan Singh. Um, and let me welcome and introduce uh, Professor Nayak. Uh, Professor Gopal Nayak is in the Economics and Social Science Department of the Indian Institute for Management, Bangalore. And he has worked in the areas of public policy, forecasting, marketing research, futures markets, commodity markets, WTO, irrigation, and forest management. He has extensive research uh, interests, and the areas include uh, public service delivery, policies in ag agriculture and rural development, performance of agricultural markets, asymmetric information and market performance, techno technology adoption, agribusiness, food safety, uh, agribusiness commodity market connections, and uh, etc. His current research includes uh, agricultural marketing reforms, ICT for agriculture and rural development, and public service. He's published five books and written numerous uh, book chapters and research articles. With that, uh, let me uh, turn it over to uh, Professor Gopal Nayak uh, to start his talk. Professor Nayak. Thank you, uh, Dr. Virmani, uh, and thank you, Charan, uh, giving me this opportunity to share uh, some of my uh, research work as well as experience in trying to see how best we can actually deliver public services in rural areas. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, more uh, on the rural service delivery. Uh, in fact, uh, today, if you look at uh, uh, digital India, I think we need to probably focus a lot more on the digital Bharat. Uh, we uh, have uh, really uh, difficulties in making uh, our rural area uh, technology savvy. Uh, there are certain constraints and because of that, they are unable to take advantage of the newer technologies and also benefit from uh, the services that uh, the governments can actually provide. Uh, so let me uh, basically talk about our experience uh, in actually looking at teleeducation and telemedicine, which nowadays has been uh, uh, a major uh, method by which uh, people can uh, sort of uh, manage the COVID situation in terms of uh, education as well as health. Now, if you look at uh, uh, delivery of public services, uh, we know that in India, it's a problem. Uh, it's a significant problem while we have uh, fairly good design in terms of uh, public policies but implementation is a is a big issue i think this we have recognized for a long time i think we have been trying to see how best we can uh, improve upon uh, but the problem uh, uh, remains uh, uh, fairly large uh, but this problem is more acute in rural areas one of the uh, problems of course one of the uh, feature in in rural area is that uh, they are more dependent on public service uh, than the private service, whereas in urban area, we could see private uh, sector participating actively in uh, education, health, and so on. In rural area, it is not so much. Uh, we have weak infrastructure in rural area. I'll come back to that point later on. And uh, information availability is also very poor in rural area. 
So there is uh, also we see disconnect between citizen and government. I'll explain this point more. And we see rural urban divide. Sometime around 2006-7, Karnataka government actually uh, started with what is called as Nemadi Kendras. Nemadi is actually translates to happy, happiness. Kendra is a center, so these happiness centers. So what is happiness centers? Essentially, the government was trying to deliver some of the important services through the these centers. What are those services? One important uh, service was this uh, land title, you know, what is called as RTC. Uh, so record of rights, tenancy and crops. So that uh, uh, was uh, quite important for farmers because every um, year they have to take this uh, the RTC from the uh, village Talati and give it to the bank, cooperative societies and other places in order to get credit. So uh, getting that itself was quite difficult task and government thought it's good to uh, you know, make it simpler and therefore um, uh, initiated these centers uh, where they can get it more uh, easily. These centers were at block level and they had initiated some centers at uh, sub block level as well. So what we thought is we will uh, study this and when we uh, studied it, we found that while well, this is a good concept uh, in bringing services to rural areas, uh, important services, and uh, you know technology can uh, actually help in delivering uh, rural service. So we uh, thought of uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, see how we, you know when when we studied the happiness center, it was not all that happy uh, centers because there were issues with respect to running that. Uh, managing these centers, and there were only a few services that were delivered at that time. So we thought of uh, sort of looking at, at this particular uh, concept and expanding it and see how best it can be managed. So when we, uh, uh, then we did a, a sort of a rapid uh, appraisal of the information needs of uh, uh, rural people. That's where we found is a number of areas where uh, farmers and rural citizens need information. It's uh, with respect to agriculture, employment, government to citizen services, education, health, banking, finance, social and cultural aspects of life, and as well as business to citizen services. So there were these whole lot of requirements that were there by the people but these were uh, not really delivered in an uh, user friendly way so we thought uh, that you know given the current uh, situation that is that is you know weak link with the rural citizen uh, uh, you know with the government inadequate private participation proliferation of uh, government schemes are there several of them are there but they don't really reach people and uh, there are no proper evaluation for policy implementation and outcome measurements are generally poor and there is a poor capability in the government and there was also of course poor data base uh, in you know used in the policy decisions so when we look at the structure in the uh, government system what we uh, find generally is at the state level, yes, there is a capability and, and, and there are enough uh, officers and so on. But as you go down district up to Taluka or a block, you know, there are fairly good systems uh, working with uh, officers and the, you know, uh, the officers and so on. But when you go to Gram Panchayat level, there is a weak link between Gram Panchayat and Talukas. And therefore, there is a there are difficulties in actually providing whether it is a, a rural development services or health services, education, or agriculture services, or revenue services, which is basically 
the land related property uh, uh, related uh, services. So what we thought is, you know, if let's say we can have a common service center at the Gram Panchayat level, then, in, you know, and if it is enabled with uh, technology, then it should be able to actually interact with the citizen. It should be able to build uh, you know, links with Taluka level as well as, uh, you know, state level. And of course, it can also uh, facilitate linkage with the business. So, uh, in effect, it should be able to solve the current problems of uh, delivering various kinds of services in the rural areas. So, with that, we uh, basically uh, started uh, um, our work in 15 gram panchayats, you know, with the assumption that if we are able to provide good quality information to the uh, people, then in the one can improve the livelihood opportunities because market information will be there, both selling their products as well as buying uh, required products. It reduces risk with more information we know, uh, you know uh, one can reduce risk as well as it can enrich living conditions because the facilitation that it can provide with respect to a whole host of issue like travel or, or uh, in entertainment and so on, uh, one should be able to um, uh, have a better uh, livelihood situation in rural area. At the same time, even the government may benefit because today government uh, is actually uh, is uh, short of uh, quality information, timely information. In fact, I remember having a discussion with one of the ministers at the Karnataka government that he said, you know, in order to get information, I need, a, you know, that it takes about two to three months from his own department. So, which is, uh, and then of course, you know, these, uh, this information is not really, uh, you know, synchronous and, and there are uh, different uh, versions at different, uh, with different people and so on. And there are a whole lot of issue with respect to that. And therefore, if we can get quality information for government, so better planning is uh, possible. Uh, effective delivery is possible as well as easy monitoring and evaluation. So that is uh, the idea with which we started uh, this common service center uh, concept, uh, providing a cluster of services, uh, integrated services. That means, you know, various aspects of a particular business like agriculture should be given at one place itself and complete information. You know, it's not just the application itself, how to fill the application, what are the documents that needs to go through and so on. You know, that if we are able to provide, then definitely people are able to make use, best use of uh, uh, such information. So, one stop community center is what uh, uh, we were, we had initiated. Uh, in fact, it was at that time, the common service centers concept was being uh, developed. And uh, so we one can provide a, a cluster of services, various uh, services with respect to education, employment, entrepreneurship, agriculture, banking, insurance, health, uh, and so on. So the so uh, that was the concept which uh, would help both government citizen as well as businesses to uh, benefit from this. The government would be able to reach the citizen better. Um, and can provide information on employment, crop production, markets, government schemes, and so on. Uh, provide various services like land records, certification, and so on at the doorstep of the farmers, and organize uh, data on the government services at uh, uh, GP level or the Gram Panchayat level, and uh, uh, transfer that data. I think that's that's going to be uh, uh, easier for the government. Quick transfer of data is going to facilitate a lot at all levels of the government, helps in monitoring and evaluation of the projects, uh, help in better and timely planning uh, due to easy availability of the data and timely execution of the project and programs. So, uh, so the, the, the whole lot of uh, benefit that the uh, government can actually get. And as far as citizen is concerned, a better service delivery, easier access to information, uh, clarity on information, uh, as well as, uh, you know, it will, be, it will also reduce the cost and reliability of information will be high. 
So with that, of course, even the businesses can come in and actually offer a whole lot of services. So we did this in the, uh, one taluka called as Gubi in Tumkur district in 15 gram panchayats. And these are the shaded area, the ones are the gram panchayats where it was tried. So what all we did, we did uh, government services. Uh, we did the tele-education, telemedicine, banking correspondence uh, in some centers and other uh, services also we brought in. So what did we do in tele-education? So this is uh, with satellite and advanced multimedia education uh, with a live interactive session for the high school students. We initially took uh, 14 high schools, uh, concentrated on mathematics, science, and English uh, for 8th, 9th, and 10th standard students. And you know, classes uh, were taught uh, from a, a government studio at Bangalore. And uh, 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 these were uh, received in all the 14 um, uh, high schools. So this is the structure. And when, with that, with the initial pilot, we found that there is substantial decrease in the failure rate. So that's one of the key things the government was also looking for. And with the, the kind of impact it has made, uh, the government agreed to go for a larger uh, number of schools. So generally it is uh, said that pilots work, but when you scale it up, it won't work. So that's where uh, the thousand schools uh, was initiated in November, 2014. And of course, at that time, when you look at the education uh, performance, you know, the performance was going down in 2010 to 2014. If you measure on some of the parameters like percentage of children in standard three who can recognize numbers and so on, you know, it was actually going down. So that was sort of alarming situation. And that's where we started uh, uh, this uh, intervention uh, in, uh, uh, in thousand schools. Uh, so um, the, while the enrollment has increased, quality of education was poor. Uh, rural children, particularly girl child, are, are at disadvantage level. And children from higher income groups uh, moving from rural school to urban English medium schools, they left out were the weaker section category in the, in the government schools. So improving quality of education in rural schools will help them uh, you know, educate uh, better and more inclusive education can be provided. So there were definitely the problems of lack of adequate number of teachers, absenteeism, availability of trained teachers and so on. So we can look at some of these figures in essentially talks about the uh, computers and about 60% of the schools did not have computers. Internet facilities about 70% of the, again, even those 30% of uh, the schools having internet, it's only for namesake. We have seen many of these uh, schools, uh, they don't work either. Uh, they have not paid the uh, monthly uh, charges and therefore they disconnected and so on. So uh, there are huge problems with respect to that. There are vacancies, uh, especially in uh, uh, science and maths, about 40% uh, science teachers were not there and maths teachers to the extent about 25% and so on. So there are huge problems in um, with respect to schools. And that's where we thought, you know, can we fill some of these gaps in terms of, you know, education from studio goes to the satellite and from satellite to it goes to various schools and within the school so they can also the students can also ask questions and and there will be moderators who could be who could be answering those questions so therefore you know it's more like a, uh you know uh, a, you know a live class uh, you know, where uh, students can also interact so we had to because of certain problems in uh, the schools like uh, power and so on we had to have uh, solar uh, power uh, with uh, adequate battery uh, and so on. Uh, so that's another uh, issue that comes up when you start doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of these technology when you try to bring in in rural areas. Again, the content-wise, you know, we were able to. Uh, in fact, uh, we had uh, partners who were able to develop 
uh, multimedia contents and they were very clear pictures and animated and so on and therefore uh, it was very clear to the uh, students and therefore uh, the uh, content uh, is something which uh, uh, the students and the teachers also liked uh, very much. These are some of the photographs and the uh, schools. So we also designed this uh, experiment in such a way that it also allows us for a rigorous uh, testing of uh, the impact. So we had treatment control schools. Uh, of course, we added both government aided school and so on. Primary, secondary school, English, mathematics and science were the three subjects that we dealt with. And it was in Kannada medium. And uh, basically supplementing the, uh, the school teachers um, uh, sessions. So the shaded uh, uh, districts are the selected district. These were the backward districts according to Nanju Dapa committee report. And so the, you can see these uh, dotted uh, uh, districts. They were the places where uh, we, we had selected 18 districts in each district. Four talukas were randomly selected and two were allotted for treatment and two for two were control. Uh, we had to make sure that the classrooms are in good condition. And again, these are also issues when you start looking at uh, some of these problems. Uh, electricity connection, and whether the earthing is there or not, and so on. Uh, and also, you know, minimum number of students uh, in the class. So these were some of the intervention design that we have looked at. And uh, uh, these the lectures were uh, conducted uh, from the studio in Bangalore, transmitted to, through the producer uh, satellite. It was a dedicated satellite, and it was really excellent to have uh, such a, a facility. So multimedia content prepared by joint team of teachers and pro computer programs, or program especially the animated part of it. Uh, lectures delivered by uh, experienced teachers and each lecture would be about 40 minutes duration and 10 minutes for interaction at the end of the lecture. So one moderator for every 12 schools for um, uh, answering questions. So schools provided with the necessary equipment and reception projection, uh, dual power back, uh, solar and so on as, as I talked about a little earlier. And uh, technical support, there was a school coordinator was provided to the interaction facility through mobile phones provided to all the schools. So if you look at the uh, results and it actually made significant uh, impact, uh, higher impact in science followed by English and mathematics. And uh, in case of science, uh, schools with no science teachers uh, show a higher impact size. So that was something uh, in, uh, one, would, one would expect and therefore uh, that's what we uh, were able to find. So this was one of the large scale program to get positive significant impact. Uh, this design was closer to the real life conditions, so it's no, no more a pilot and so on. And uh, it, this is achieved with a computer ratio of 135 to one student, so which is, sorry, one computer, 135 students and one computer, which is really good which is actually uh, similar to many developing countries, whereas developed countries can have much higher ratio, whereas here, uh, you know, in developing countries, we need to take that into account. And when we looked at uh, the effectiveness uh, in terms of cost, about a 4.7% increase in the spending can increase the learning up to 45%. So that's the kind of impact that we have seen. And in, when we look at the literature, you know, we agree with uh, uh, some of the studies that they have done that if well integrated into education systems, ICT can enhance the learning uh, process of students. And uh, the key is to find the right match between the areas that need intervention, technology, and pedagogy. So, it, you know, so you, you need time to really work out the right balance between uh, these things. And of course, you know, good content is very important. So it should uh, be crisp, distinct, uh, cover variety of topics, interactive, uh, simple local language, uh, uh, the use of local language. So these are all important uh, features that one should uh, have. So that was the experience that we had uh, with uh, teleeducation. Uh, very uh, interesting 
uh, and very productive uh, way of looking at how to use technology in rural areas with the uh, problems that we have in terms of uh, not able to find enough teachers or uh, uh, teacher absenteeism. They are also not trained. Uh, sometimes, you know, syllabuses change. You know, we sort of try to align with the central syllabus, but the teachers are not taught uh, appropriately for uh, the uh, various modules that have been, uh, you know, included. Uh, so those are issues, and, and 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 this was also very useful. We found in hilly areas and so on. So that's another uh, uh, thing. The and also it is. Very useful for physically challenged uh, students, and sometimes there are special schools or hostels and so on uh, for those uh, situations. We because for them finding teachers is very very difficult. They are not easily available, and from you know so from a, a central location, one can uh, provide good quality education to uh, such students as well. So those are some advantages that uh, one would have. So um, it's, it's uh, you know, new technology can uh, help uh, in many ways uh, in improving the education, quality of education in rural areas. So I'll briefly talk about uh, the telemedicine. Um, telemedicine was also one of the things that we tried in our, uh, 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 in our Gram Panchayat experiment. Um, so, um, this was in 2010, 2012. In fact, when we went to uh, this Gram Panchayat, uh, uh, adopting uh, 15 Gram Panchayats, we also sort of uh, um, uh, took help of a number of uh, companies uh, which had uh, uh, the technology to deliver, uh, like Cisco had uh, telemedicine uh, developed uh, at that time. Uh, Intel had uh, atom computers, which would use uh, a very low uh, amount of uh, power. Uh, so battery driven things, of course, in, uh, in now it is very common to find laptops and, and, and power saving devices. But at that time, it, you know, so we, we uh, uh, collaborated with a number of companies which had, uh, you, know, and, you know, new technologies, better technologies, which can be taken to the rural areas and see to what extent they can actually help in delivering the uh, the public services. So uh, in case of telemedicine, uh, we used uh, Cisco, uh, Cisco's uh, uh, the technology that they, are de they had developed in uh, uh, very recently and shown that in their campus uh, in Bangalore, uh, so, uh, we um, uh, tried this uh, in two uh, primary health centers. Uh, there were a number of issues that we had to address um, right from uh, broadband connection itself, uh, then tweaking the broadband connection because the upload and download uh, uh, um, uh, split uh, was quite uh, different, like upload split was very low. And therefore, you know, if you really want to uh, send the pictures, uh, video pictures of patients, uh, it would not go through. So you had to change that split. So, uh, you know, again, we had to work with uh, the providers at the, uh, you know, BSNL for, uh, for quite some time in order to change those uh, split uh, so that it was possible to um, uh, uh, make uh, uh, use for uh, telemedicine as well. So we uh, connected from a primary health center in a rural area. That is uh, the place where we have adopted Gram Panchayat in Gubbi Taluk and Tumkur district uh, to Apollo Hospital in Bangalore. Uh, so we were basically looking at how the distant, of course we tried with the district hospital itself, but it was in terms of uh, official communication and getting approvals and so on. It was really Herculean task. And therefore we uh, looked at uh, the private sector and Apollo Hospital was just opposite to our campus and it was so easy to access them. And it's because of that we, uh, we uh, went with the Apollo Hospital. Otherwise our aim was to try to see how can we connect PHCs to Taluka Hospital, Taluka Hospital and District Hospital so that uh, even if uh, there are no doctors in, in the PHC level, 
uh, the patient should be able to get their uh, health care in, in most of the times through the doctors that are available at Taluk Hospital and District Hospital. But that again, you know, because of this uh, difficulty in actually getting through the uh, government systems, so we went through uh, the uh, the the private hospital. Then we essentially, uh, since uh, there was a uh, there were doctors in the PHCs, so we basically uh, focused on the secondary care. So primary care is something which PHC doctor will be able to uh, give, and only when in cases where uh, he or she uh, is not comfortable in, uh, uh, in 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 providing the health care, uh, then uh, they could refer to the uh, uh, for the hospital. So again, you know, they're also uh, timing and uh, planning. This was important. We sort of dedicated two days in a week uh, you know, for connection with Apollo Hospital because the doctors were also busy and and it's a, it's a question of time for them. And therefore, uh, they were able to give uh, two weeks, uh, you know, two days in a week, uh, about uh, about two hours or so, uh, their time in uh, in helping us in connecting with the patients and, and so that you know, we could experiment and see how this can be done. Again, the, the uh, Cisco's uh, initial version of the technology had uh, various problems, but they were so helpful in terms of really working on it and trying to make sure that they addressed uh, all the problems and therefore, uh, you know, the, you know, after about a few months, uh, they were able to give us a, a good uh, workable uh, solution uh, technology for uh, telemedicine. So uh, the doctor at uh, Apollo Hospital was able to do the diagnosis as well as prescription, and which was given to the um, patient uh, uh, with the help of the doctor there at the PHCs. So we tested this uh, for about six months and. Uh, it served about 180 patients. Uh, this was a long time ago, this 2011, 12. Uh, and because of certain legal issues, so that means at that time, telemedicine was not approved by the government. It was not legally approved and therefore uh, we just stopped it. We basically demonstrated the technology. We uh, said that this is something which is, you know, we, we, we could take advantage of given that there is a shortage of uh, doctors and, and also, um, you know, uh, again, making them uh, their time available uh, in rural areas. So uh, uh, telemedicine, so uh, of course now there are, uh, government has started uh, and many states have actually in Karnataka, there is a ESNG uh, which is uh, uh, has been uh, uh, introduced. Uh, the Gram uh, Panchayat where we were working, uh, we sort of tried to look at it, and of course, I think it needs. Uh, it's it's uh, you know there is a lot of improvement that can be actually that can be done uh, with the COVID situation. Many private hospitals have no teleconsultation. Uh, startups, number of startups are coming up and they are developing their own software. And we have adopted five gram panchayats again in under the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan of the Government of India program, where we are trying to see how best we can actually uh, use telemedicine in order to uh, address the healthcare concerns. So some of these advantages, especially in rural areas with uh, respect to uh, tele telemedicine, is quick access to doc doctors. Today, again, they have to travel uh, often uh, uh, many miles, uh, go to town, uh, go to the cities in order to um, get health care. Uh, but, you know, if uh, we are able to uh, uh, provide a, a, a vibrant uh, telemedicine uh, solution, I'm sure it's going to be a great uh, help for uh, the uh, rural people in terms of uh, accessing healthcare facilities. So quick access to doctor is there, access to various specialist doctors, you know, so different, unlike other situations where you have to run around different places and so on, especially in rural areas. Of course, in, in large cities, there is one hospital which can have all the 
uh, specialist doctors, whereas in rural areas, towns and so on, we find they are all spread over in different places. Uh, quick second opinion is, is, uh, is, is easy. Uh, so availability of specialist at any time, it could be, of course, nowadays people are also linking with uh, international doctors and so on. So therefore, uh, any time is not an uh, issue. Uh, and access to various systems of uh, medicine, that's another thing. Many of the PHCs are actually uh, manned by um, one or the other Irish doctors. Uh, but then, you know, if uh, there is an Ayurvedic doctor and if you want all the allopathic treatment, you have to go to some other place. So that's where I think there is telemedicine, then it can actually uh, help in connecting all these different uh, types of medicine experts and therefore make it available to the uh, people. And therefore, uh, that will be a great facilitation. So it's uh, particularly useful for elderly, mobile patients and, and children. Uh, immediate care is possible. I think that's a lot of deaths due to uh, health issues are because of uh, not uh, available timely healthcare situation, particularly in rural areas. Another uh, major uh, facilitation would be that creation of a longitudinal secure database. I think if such a database can be uh, developed with maybe the uh, UID and so on, then it's very easy to look at uh, patients' uh, health uh, uh, conditions uh, for any doctors. Of course, it should be made only available to the uh, doctors so that privacy uh, is uh, actually protected. So, so, but that's all now. Now it's all possible, and therefore, you know, it can help in uh, better diagnosis of the uh, uh, the illness uh, and therefore appropriate medicines. Uh, for the uh, patients, so it could reduce the cost of healthcare, uh, and for a rural area, actually telemedicine is the best, uh, uh, you know, solution. May not solve all problems, but it can address a lot of problems in the rural area, and it can even have a more integrated approach of, you know, any government insurance or any other insurance, and link it with the uh, telemedicine which will make things very easy for uh, patients to access healthcare facilities. So what are challenges? Uh, I'll just spend a few minutes and uh, close my presentation. So of course, in rural area, these are problems. There are problems of computer availability itself, whether it's laptop, mobile. Mobile is now the most of these things are available on smartphones. So mobile penetration, of course, it's increasing. But, uh, you know, uh, there is still uh, problems and internet connectivity. So, so that's a problem while it's so, so improving, but again, reliable internet connectivity is a problem. And we were trying to see how best the teleeducation can be rolled out in rural area for individual students. There are a whole lot of issues. So, of course, you can solve it. You can address it. If you continuously think about it, we can address it. But the problem is, you know, if you don't uh, think uh, about solving problems, then again, you know, there are issues. So the problem remains problems for a long time to come. Connectivity broadband is, uh, again, reliable broadband connectivity is an issue. We had all kinds of uh, things, you know, it, it's, you know, maybe people say it is too MB, but, you know, maybe there are only few, uh, you know, uh, kilobytes of uh, speed. So that's, that's where uh, fluctuations, a lot of uh, fluctuation that you can see in rural areas uh, and uh, both download and upload speed split is an issue that one has to address and the companies tell it, you know, uh, tell it, uh, 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 com companies should uh, be able to address this. Of course, uh, in, in especially most of the rural areas are connected with the BSNL. And there are also issues with respect to uh, responding to requirements as well as you know their own uh, awareness about uh, technology and so on. And there are so those issues that needs to be solved if you really want to make it uh, make it uh, user friendly and, and, and able to address problems. Power availability that's another issue. In many cases, there may be few hours of power available. And uh, also there are issues with respect to, again, uh, surge in power 
and of course, you know, in many cases, earthing is not proper and so on. And so those are all issues that one has to quality of power. Quality power availability is a major issue in rural areas. Uh, devices for vitals, so as vital measurements, of course, now the, there are several instruments are coming up in measuring in uh, remotely. Even mobiles can measure some of it and, and, and over uh, time, I'm, you know, we, have, we are seeing better and better uh, instruments are coming up and many startups are also uh, uh, coming forward to uh, address some of these issues. So we are hoping you now in, in, in probably you know we will be able to uh, resolve most of the issue. As of now itself, there are good, reasonably good technology available in terms of measuring vitals. Uh, then the question of uh, trained personnel in rural area. Again, one has to look at uh, availability of trained personnel in the rural area. Maybe train them such a way that they, they could uh, and they could actually be comfortable with. Hello. Trains. In using. Oh, sorry, Professor, I can't hear you. Okay. Hello. 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 Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Sir, it's audible, sir. Lost the connection. Gopal, Can sir. anybody hear me? Why is it audible, sir? Sir, it's audible, Arvind, sir. sir you are Hello. Okay. Is audible. it audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Professor, okay. 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 Professor, are you audible? Okay. Okay, let me check with Professor. Uh, can you could you hear Professor? Yes, yes, I'm. I can hear. Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah. So okay. you were talking about the personnel. Yeah, personnel yeah. Uh, availability of personnel in uh, rural right. area is an issue because most uh, people who have technical background would like to uh, work in urban areas. Uh, so finding appropriate personnel uh, is a problem, but it may be uh, sort of solved by training. Those who are going to stay back in rural areas, uh, that's uh, an important thing one has to consider. Uh, of course, one has to also look at uh, what is the logistics of uh, medicine supply, uh, non medical med medicine supplies. So, once the prescription is there, you know how one can actually get the uh, supplies of medicine and uh, administration so unless it is a private sector uh, this one in the government sector the problem has been how systems are administered let us say if uh, if the doctors are not lined up uh, properly without uh, proper uh, queuing facilities and so on again there are a lot of confusion we have seen patients uh, waiting and then uh, going uh, away because doctors are not available. So those are those. So how do we administer systems or manage systems is something which uh, uh, is very important uh, uh, in in providing these services. Uh, again, support from various government departments is important. That means that if you are saying continuous power availability is there, then you have to look at the electricity department and and how they are uh, able to uh, uh, provide service such a way that uh, these some of these programs will work uh, very well continuously uh, and able to get quality services uh, by the uh, people. So in conclusion, uh, digital Bharat, instead of saying digital India, I'm, I'm focusing more on the rural areas. Uh, so needs reliable infrastructure, both power and connectivity. It is not saying so many villages are connected and so on, but what is the quality of the power? As I said, we, we have been talking about so many years, whether it is quality irrigation, quality power, quality connectivity and so on, but somehow that quality aspect of it is sort of missing from our uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, thought processes. Uh, so, process changes uh, are also required in order to make sure that the telemedicine is also part of the uh, delivery system, important part, it can be an important part as, uh, as well. And then partnership, we may have to even collaborate with private sector. I don't think we should hesitate because, you know, say, have the capability in uh, making, in addressing problems, able to manage efficiently systems and so on. There should be some way of uh, working together with the part with the private sector. I think PPPs are not so successful, especially in the social sectors, 
uh, in India. I think that's uh, uh, there are a whole lot of issues with respect to that. I think that's something we need to uh, take care. And uh, of course, capability in, in the government system also needs to know what are these in the whole, you know, technology part of it needs to be understood very well in order to uh, make sure that, you know, there is a appropriate uh, sort of uh, supervision by the government uh, system as well. So therefore, there is a need for capability uh, and development. At the end of the day, we need to have a functional system. This, this is where, you know, I think we, we see PHCs and so on, you know, often um, either the equipment is not there or the personnel is not there or something else is not there. So if let's say one of them is not there, we, we can't really make it, you know, it, it cannot work. It cannot provide the services it is meant for. So we need to really look at how do we uh, develop functional system, even if it, they are fewer, it is okay, but they should be functional. And there has to be some minimum standard of uh, functionality. And that is where I think we need to focus on. And of course, budget allocation, as I mentioned earlier. So the school systems were not given budget for uh, monthly charges of uh, um, telecom. And so therefore, you know, they don't have this. So, so even if you are connect, if you connect the uh, with the internet, you can't pay. And therefore it is as if, you know, there is no use of uh, having internet connected. So those are some issues that needs to be addressed in order to uh, make sure that some of these technologies can be effectively addressed or effectively used in uh, addressing the uh, problems in rural areas. So thank you so much, and uh, I would stop at this. And if there are any questions, yeah. I'll be happy to answer. Right. So uh, thank you. That was very interesting. So I'm going to start with a number of questions. If you have some uh, pencil and paper, uh, that would probably be helpful. But I can always repeat them. So yeah. uh, so basically, I have, I have questions on each of these. So let me. I don't know whether you want me to break it up, but uh, let me start with the first one: the service center. Yeah. Now, uh, you you didn't quite explain, uh, uh, you know, connectivity. I think you have talked about. Yeah. But the man management of the center and how it shared access. How did how was the whatever time was available, etc. How was that allocated? How how was access controlled or managed or whatever? So, uh, one question is on on the service centers. Uh, the second one is on the uh, the. the the tele education yeah. and uh, you know once we get uh, to a lower level go down from the secondary school level where i think you explained very nicely that obviously where the gaps are but it's always good to get a confirmation my whole you know uh, i've been recommending uh, tele education for a long time and the concept was exactly that because we have missing teachers yeah. uh, obviously there will be no te teaching it is better to connect uh, with somebody sitting in the yeah. city who doesn't want to come to the rural areas, but yes. have a person sitting there who helps the the students, so to say, you know, taking it down to the primary level. So the yeah. whole issue of uh, either training the teachers if they are available, uh, training the trainers, teaching the teachers, uh, or uh, you know, a hybrid system where uh, there's a lower level, like you said, if there is a rural rural person who lives yeah. there who's not looking just to move to another urban area. Who can yeah. given minimum um, training to be an intermediary? So the actual training comes uh, electronically, but there's somebody facilitating the student. So that's the second that's question, uh, yeah. which is a class of things. And yeah. the, I don't know whether you, you want me to give the rest or you want to answer. I'll, I'll answer these two and then. Okay, right, right. Okay. So as far as the CSC uh, management is concerned, we requested okay. the Karnataka state government to. Uh, help us in providing space and so on. And they were very kind enough to give space, uh, connectivity, as well as power. So mm -hmm. it came from them. And what we did is we were doing this project on a sort of a pro bono basis. There were no budgets at all. We only requested the companies to come with us and then, you know, test your technology. If you have good ones, you know, let's show you, you know, show it to the government and see whether it's working or not, or you even fine tune your technology. Because many times, you know, technology developed in the lab may not work in the field. 
and you may not appreciate the, some of the problems that may be there. And therefore, you know, you it's also good for you to come and test uh, these things in uh, some of them came like Intel, uh, Cisco, Wipro was there. Number of uh, startups were there like uh, uh, weather stay, automatic weather station and things like that. People came in and then uh, worked with us. And one of them actually ran the uh, common service center. Mm, uh, okay. So, you know, putting you know one computer and a printer and a, you know the scanner and so on. You know, they they ran the center. They were mm. uh, charging some uh, small amount to for service. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. So therefore, uh, you know, it, it it went on quite well, uh, except that you know as uh, people change in the government, the views change and people change mm. and, and and then. Some point of time, it becomes a little difficult to work. Yeah, so, right. So I presume they uh, did kind of first come, first serve type of thing. The person, the company which was managing and charging a small fee, or, or uh, how did that? Those char yeah. those charges were government uh, charges. Okay, okay. So it did not. Be, in fact, we were just you know initially asking you come and uh, this thing. We are not guaranteeing anything. Mm -hmm. So you may have to provide just a free service to you. But there are there are services for which government actually pays. For example, come, you know, uh, inputting data like NREG data input, they actually pay this service. But you know, if the same thing can be done by the company which is running CSC, mm -hmm. they should be paid the same amount. So that's right. what we were looking for. You know, so so okay. some of the standard. Uh, you know, uh, jobs for which government mm -hmm. just let them pay, and so that it is a great help to the uh, uh, citizens. Because citizens, we we just estimated the extent of uh, uh, savings they were doing. So if they go to uh, uh, a taluk level, block level, wherever uh, these government centers are there, and uh, try to get uh, uh, a certificate. Mm -hmm. Uh, then it would cost about uh, 250 rupees for them. Whereas here they were just able to get only the pay that only 10 rupees and get it. Mm -hmm. So you you were saving like 200 rupees for yeah. a citizen. Right. But, but, but surprisingly, one of the very interesting thing that I observe is, so what we told the, uh, uh, the, the government at that time is, well, you know, uh, instead of charging 10 rupees, we would like to charge 15 rupees because that is what the exact cost of the delivery is. Yeah. But they would not agree. They would <laughs> make, they would rather just close down and go and let the, uh, you know, people go to somewhere and uh, spend 250 rupees rather yeah. than making 10 rupees to 15 rupees. This Amazing. was really uh, surprising to yeah. us, uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, so those, those are right. some of the issues that uh, right. and uh, the, on teaching the teachers and having kind yeah, of teaching we, assistants. Yeah, and, actually, yeah. what we did was we we basically said that okay, let's let, let in fact our pilot in Gubbi in fourteen mm -hmm. school. Initially, mm -hmm. when we started, the teachers were not very happy. They were saying, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to replace us. But mm. when they start, when we started it, they realized that this is a good source of information for them also. Mm -hmm. So they they said, you know, this is good. You know, you know, we also understand. We also learn. You know, a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. concepts are also not very clear. If you yeah. animate and uh, you know with good pictures and so on, if you are able to do things, it is great. Uh, thing, good examples. If you give, that's a good thing for you. For mm -hmm. us. So they sort of accepted, and at the end of the year, they were very happy. So the same mm -hmm. thing, you know, we also expected in the larger thousand schools as well. So mm -hmm. same thing happened actually in the sense yeah. that you know over a period of in fact they used to come and sit in the class and then take mm -hmm. notes, and there yeah. were there were cases where the nearby school where the teleeducation was not there, the mm -hmm. teachers came for that particular session and then he, they sat and they they took notes. In yeah. fact, in a way, this was actually training the teachers also. Right. So apart from uh, having uh, the regular uh, class session to the students, right, it right. was also teachers training. And if, mm -hmm. you have, if you have just teachers training as a this thing, you know, <laughs> it will not be effective. Right. right. You know, it right. is another program. Oh, I'll go to Bangalore and uh, stay, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, stay for two days, three days, and come back, kind of thing. Yeah. 
Right, right. Whereas in their own place, if they are able, in, in their own comfort, if they are able right. to, to get better quality information or, or educational resources, uh, they would be Excellent. more Right, right. That's very useful. I, I'm sorry to hurry you a bit, but at 7 o'clock, I have to uh, I have a DD interview. Oh, sure, sure. So, yeah. okay. Now, the last question or last yeah. set of questions. Yeah. Um, the, the PHC, it was not clear. You said you chose two PHCs. Yeah. What level are they at? You know, we you gave us a uh, yeah this yeah. thing up to yeah. taluka and then uh, panchayati, but I guess PHCs are in between somewhere, right? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, in our system, each mm -hmm. department has its own circles and divisions right. and so on, and sometimes they don't overlap properly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the boundaries are a little different. PHCs are for usually two to three uh, gram panchayats. Uh, so there is one PHC for two to three gram panchayats, and uh, they are generally um, uh, they have an MBBS doctor, uh, one or two nurses, and uh, of course basic facilities in terms of uh, medical care. But a uh, lot of them, again, the doctors are in short supply. They also don't want to go to the rural areas, uh, so they may be uh, having Ayush doctors. Uh, or sometimes they may not have only nurses may be there. So that's the uh, condition in most of the rural areas. Sorry, uh, you are on mute. We can't hear you. No, we can't. We can't. Yeah, sorry. The, the, this fellow has started the DD just in my ear, but okay, as long as you are not disturbed. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. uh, so, um, yeah, so let, let me, uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Ratan is there, but let me ask my last question. So, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the same question with respect to the Ayush practitioners, were they willing to learn? Um, you know, some allopathic, which may be useful in their work uh, and, and use the uh, information you are providing, the connectivity or not? What was that? The... Uh, in fact, the two PHCs where we tried uh, were uh, one had nurse and the mm -hmm. other uh, had doctor. So, mm -hmm. uh, so with the allopathic doctor, so there was right. no, we okay. didn't really explore that. Yeah. Right. So, in terms of uh, their attitude, yeah. was it, were they also, I mean, the teachers you said were very uh, positive, so to say, yeah. right? Yeah. Later, what yeah, about later these on, guys? Later on, what yes. about the nurse and the doctor? Were they uh, open fact, or were yeah, they resisting? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you know, again, initially they also thought maybe it doesn't work and so on. I think uh, mm -hmm. everybody has a sort of skepticism about you know, technology being right. But they, 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 why? But later they on, come they, over? As, yeah. they, as they were able to interact with Apollo Hospital specialists, they mm -hmm. really said, okay, this is something which they also can learn. Right, okay, because good. Many yeah, yeah. things if they don't, uh, they don't know, so they could yeah. get clarification from the doctors. Right, right. So that was really good. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I, I'll finish my and give others a chance. Um, actually, is uh, uh, Dr. Ratan Chand, are you there? No, I don't see Charan. Yeah, I am there. I am uh, there. Uh, do you want to ask some questions? Yeah, I have a question. I mean, uh, I want to know whether, uh, according to Dr. Gopal Naik, his whole project was a success, according to you? According or... to me, yes. In fact, we did a evaluation and uh, we found that, you know, there is a significant impact on the learning levels. And uh, this, even if you look at from the viewpoint of the cost consideration itself, as I said. But uh, I have, uh, I have a, I mean, I have not completed the question. Okay. In a month, you had eight working days, isn't it? For uh, eight days. And Sorry, in, in, a month, in a month, you have eight days. Two days uh, per week. Yeah, two days per week. 
so four weeks so, in a month that, that, no no that is two days four week is actually for the med telemedicine yeah i am talking about telemedicine only okay okay yeah sure so you have a uh, uh, six months so 48 uh, sessions of 48 days yeah in 48 days you covered only how many patients 180 patients about 180 yeah so not even uh, five patients per day no no see i think these things it depends on several factors of course these are all at that point of time the technology being introduced and uh, in order to make uh, uh, you know these uh, things you know acceptable for people the doctors the nurses the patients and so on it takes time and also even coordinating with the you know, phcs and apollo hospital itself is a uh, herculean task so you you lose time you know in that so towards the end you know as you you know do this continuously then you know you gain confidence of everybody and also technology also starts working better and therefore you know you can serve larger number of people these are all experiments you know don't we, we not we should not directly start uh, calculating the cost uh, in this but i think you know these are all things which need to we need to go through the uh, you know learning curve and uh, and and you know in the long run they will benefit okay i yeah so that was more of an experiment of an experiment yeah, yeah, yeah. that was an experiment yeah Hey, Dr. Uh, Gamali. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, 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 Ratan, can I request you to take the question because I'm I may have uh, to use. Two couple of places. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, you are yeah. good. Audible. Can I speak? Hello. Hello. Can yeah. I speak? so you know i had gone with dr gopal nai to couple of places uh, while this was going on and i must tell you my experience at the public health center uh, the doctor the nurses were very enthusiastic and um, the quality of analysis that came there was also very good means this is my first time that i had seen that telemedicine can be so effective <coughs> <coughs> that telemedicine can be so effective and it can reach the experts can reach in the hinterlands of india without much effort so i think um, uh, as professor gopal naik is mentioning yes it might not have been a runaway success in terms of number of people who came to the public health center and benefited but i'm sure it mattered a lot <coughs> in terms of the quality of life or the emergency that happened and they were able to take care of the emergency to save a life from that end professor gopal gopal is that right yeah 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 i'm here okay yeah. uh, 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 let's see what any questions may i yeah may i ask one question Ramani, may I speak? Uh, yes, Dutta. I said yes. The first person. Okay, yeah. um, Doctor Nayak, yeah. you know you have touched on the issue which is affecting us mostly as far as this country is concerned. How would you like to use your experimental report and see it being in other parts of the country also? Because the same issues they exist anywhere and everywhere. Now, when we look at ours. Uh, Uh, you know the country this punjab and haryana they have put up like this common service center in terms of some parks but yeah. they, are, they don't have that kind of spread which you have uh, you know tried to invigorate uh, with this medical facility and other facilities but the problem does exist so how do you like to get this idea to rest of the state so they they could be benefited by the csc's kind of uh, structures one is that you know yeah. it is very intriguing to see that uh, suddenly we have woken up to rural areas i don't think the pandemic will make any distinction between between the urban and the rural areas now shall we presume 
Like as it had hit us, you know, initially, the government maybe for the for the lack of capacities and other uh, issues, they had not touched on the uh, rural areas, but then they were equally affected. Now we have started uh, focusing more on the rural areas and urban areas as well. But then we see that the urban areas uh, kind of, you know, those, those uh, logistical operations have not, have not been up to the mark. Now with this rural and urban areas now combined, I mean, how would you like to see this? Uh, was it a deliberate attempt earlier or a motivated strategy? Uh, what what have you to kindly say on this? Well, you know, uh, as far as CSC is concerned, uh, you know, there is definitely a, a lot of uh, potential uh, for them to deliver quality services in rural areas. But again, you know, a lot of many of these services are in under the government control. Unless the government is really wanting to uh, provide quality service, uh, whether they they do it themselves or whether they take the help of CSC, uh, these things will not happen. Uh, that's why you know I gave some examples of what kind of a problem that we faced. You know, we were working with the government. And we were, uh, you know, there was no charge, nothing, but still, you know, uh, people were sort of indifferent, you know, even if you come up with better technology and so on, we saw that they are not excited about it. So, you know, see if, if unless you have a focus, unless you really want to, you know, make people's life easier, uh, you, you know, this will not happen because you know, I think people or the, or the system will basically look at, okay, what CSE is doing and how do I benefit from this and so on, then there is no way things will happen. So it's, it's it needs a, 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 a mindset change. Uh, uh, you know, then only, you know, some of these things can really happen. I think that these are, you know, most of our problems can be, we can easily address. It's not such a big this thing at all. But we have to have that, you know, intention to address them. That's important. Uh, that's the uh, you know, experience that we have. Are quite much there in this uh, or part of the country also. And uh, I don't think any of it has taken up these kind of initiative to address uh, the problems nearby. That is that is equally yeah. you know particular. yeah okay okay yeah no that was very good question but I have to move on is it, anybody else wants to ask a question uh, hello hello but keep it short there is I think is uh, uh, Mr Vijay Kumar and Mr Mubarak Ali yeah sir I am Vijay here sir Mubarak Ali okay but be uh, short and uh, crisp because I'll have to uh, Wind up at 10 to 7. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, is Mubarak Ali. Uh, yeah. Good evening to all and good evening to you, Professor. Please uh, go ahead. First of all, th thanks for the insight session, sir. Uh, my question to Professor something you have learned during this crisis and what thing you hope to remain after the crisis? Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. You know, I, I learning is basically, you know, somehow. Um, yeah, the, the, the most important thing is uh, if the government machinery really wants to uh, address some of these problems, we have now technology. In fact, there were a whole host of uh, volunteers who, who are ready to come with us. You know, there is a lot of energy in rural area as well as in urban area. You know, a whole lot of energy is there, you know, particularly in uh, cities like Bangalore and so on, you know, a whole lot of people, IT people and so on, ready to address problems. Challenge, a whole lot of students who are ready to address problems. So we need to harness the energies of all these people in order to, you know, make sure that we are able to run a good system, either in rural area or even urban area. So that has to be there. So, you know, you, you, you challenge them, challenge our youth. They will be able to you know, give them some training. I'm sure they will be able to help us a lot. Okay, Professor Subramaniam and then Mr. Vijay Kumar, if he's still there. Professor Subramaniam. Good evening, uh, Professor. Uh, Good evening, Dr. Sir. Virmani ji and then Charan Singh ji. And uh, very nice from Dr. Professor Kopal, a good lecture. I, I, was, I am from the Reserve Bank. 
I had visited Dr. Ganapati Apollo Hospital Trust facilities, uh, telemedicine, telemedicine uh, consultation facility at Chennai uh, at, his, at their invitation. Uh, but then uh, what has happened was, hello, one, one second. Yeah. And then when I visited, because they were trying to present this one connectivity with uh, African countries that particular time. But the main problem was it is only connectivity and then acceptability from the participants and the patients or even not able to communicate to them what exactly was required from the uh, digital platform. So they especially it is happening in the rural areas and then with the rural panchayats and then local leaders and all that. So that is one area which you have to be addressed very carefully and then they have to be totally involved and uh, people that will help. How about what is your idea about it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think connectivity is very important. That's why I think some of these systems, somehow we have to manage them very well. For example, connectivity. Why in, poor, in rural area, poor connectivity? I know this, this is something we need to address. And we do have uh, the universal service obligations and there are several things that are, you know, funds are available. Why don't we make this rural connectivity robust so that, you know, we can really deliver good services to the villages and you know like the road you know it's as in the, the electricity road and connectivity now connectivity is also as important as road so if we have you know uh, good road we realize that you know we need to have a good road for rural people in order to access markets and so on and that's how the economic growth can take place at the same time we should also now look at connectivity as one of the most important infrastructure that we should be providing to rural area so that they can you know again you know make use of the uh, opportunities that exist you know in the uh, ecosystem so that's that's that that's what we need to take care of and it, how, it how much possible. cost how much cost you expect that to invest uh, from the gdp uh, budget point of view one percent two percent what could be the cost for covering entire rural connectivity that I am not sure, you know, how much it is, but I think, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we end up spending enough money, uh, but only thing is, you know, the quality improvement is what is required. And basically, you know, I'm saying, how do you run systems, public systems effectively is an important issue that, that we need to look at. If we are able to do that, I'm sure I think we can, you know, with the same amount of money or maybe another, you know, five, 10% more, we should be able to run systems. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Nagesha, you want to ask a question? Hello. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, I am Vijay, Vijay Kumar is there. Okay, Vijay. Uh, sir, in case of uh, emergency, uh, telemedicine required fast. Uh, some issues like traffic and other issues uh, pro, uh, providers can face, then how can provide the, uh, in case of emergency, what was the solution for that time? No, actually, you know, so I don't have an incidence of an emergency to uh, elaborate. What I think is, well, if there is an emergency, well, let's uh, just look at a snake bite. Okay, so what to do is a, an important thing, right? So if you can connect to a doctor and ask him, you know, what, you, what I need to do immediately and then where do I take uh, the person and so on, and that will be a great help. So those are things that we need to really, you know, uh, think about. And a lot of, you know, people die because of, uh, you know, lack of information, right? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to ask one question, if you allow me to. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, thank you very much for such an informative session. My question is that with the advent of new edutech, uh, and startups in the edutech and the connectivity from the government's uh, government's point of view through the bharat net and such schemes how do you see the public private partnership in this sector and will we be able to exploit the new uh, outcomes from these edutech and the bharat net type of schemes sir what is your opinion about it sir? that's a very good question i think uh, you know the startups are really a, a great uh, movement you know, there is a whole host of startups coming up, but that's where, you know, a lot of energy in the, among the youths to, uh, st you know, initiate uh, newer things, newer technology, newer systems, and so on. 
I think if we are able to provide a good ecosystem where they can work, I'm sure you know they will really solve most of our problems. We need to be able to work with the startups. We need to be able to work with the private sector. I think we don't have a good way. You know, we end up uh, thinking that okay, private sectors are exploiting or private profit motive. They have to be profit motive in order to make sure that they are there in the long run. We need to be able to come up with a system, you know, where the, you know one can harmoniously work together. And you can see all the developed countries, you know, even for their more most sensitive, uh, you know, services and products, they take services of private sector. Why don't we do it? You know, we, we, we can do that. Then startups are really, you know, they can really solve many problems. They, 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 they are working day and night in order to look at certain problems. And now we do find that, you know, if they are dependent on the government, it's, it's, it's a problem for them. This is where we need to really, you know, focus, uh, focus our attention and see how can we make the ecosystem friendlier for you know, startups so that they will also help in delivering these public services. I think it's a good question. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I don't see any other written questions. If there's anybody else, just speak. This is going to be the last question. Otherwise, uh, any other person? Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Who is that? Please introduce. Uh, uh, this is Iman from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Okay, go ahead. You are the last question. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Nag, for your insightful talk. So, as you said, the startups are emerging in telemedicine field, but they are facing difficulties in reaching the rural communities to deliver the care. So, what is the, your perspective? The better way to reach the rural uh, market to deliver the care? Yeah, you know that's where you know what I said is you know most of the services in rural area are provided by the government as of now. Maybe here and there some private uh, this thing, but there are many services like the health education and so on is provided by the government. Either government itself, you know, improves its own system or it should take the help of some private sector like the startups in order to deliver. So our aim should be delivering appropriate uh, services to the people. Not so much about whether government provides it or some private party provides it. Our focus should be facilitating people. And in that, you know, in sense, if we are able to work together, I think that will be a good uh, way to do it because the, uh, the private sector is, you know, efficient and bring resources and manage things better and so on. You know, of course, you don't want to want them to exploit yeah. people. But they, that's where, you know, you also need to be, the government system also need to be careful. But I think there is always a way to work together. And I see that, you know, that, that, you know, we need to learn to work with the private sector in order to take their, uh, you know, uh, uh, the skills, technology, and management capabilities. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor. I'm sorry. Uh, today, unfortunately, I, I accepted. Uh, uh, so I will thank you and uh, conclude the session. Uh, that, uh, would Dr. Charan Singh, you want to... Uh, take over or uh, yeah i just want to i just want to mention that today's session will be uh, available the recording tomorrow by noon and i'm sure this is such a beautiful session everyone would love to hear it again uh, i also have small announcement to make this is going to be a very very informative week for all our friends and patrons tomorrow 3 to 4 30 we have the shadow monetary policy and i would invite you to please join the gdp data has just been released and Professor, you know, Dr. Virmani's analysis is going to be really significant. So please join us tomorrow. And uh, we also have on June 3, Professor Datta, who's going to speak into us in geopolitics. And the most important thing, on June 4, we have Ben Friedman from Harvard speaking to us on monetary policy. Please remember, on the morning of June 4, monetary policy will be announced. But Ben Friedman will be talking to us about the global monetary policy and his insight. He's an authority on that. So please join us uh, for all these events that I've just mentioned. I want to thank Dr. Virmani. Despite his busy schedule, he agreed to come and chair the session. And um, the other speakers and participants who asked questions. And most importantly, my friend and dear uh, colleague when we were at IAM, uh, Professor Gopal Nair. 
Thank I you very much. I knew his hard work. Thank you all. I knew his hard work. I've gone and visited the places which he mentioned, and his experience is so vast in this that was reflected in his talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. With that, we close the session today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>